We are quite pleased to kick things off today with the Postmaster General of the United States, Megan Brennan. Postmaster General Brennan started her 33-year postal career as a letter carrier at Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and she has been Postmaster General since 2015. She has her degrees from Immaculata College and MIT. Ms. Brennan is an outstanding postal leader. She has led the Postal Service during one of its most challenging times, and we deeply appreciate her willingness to join us today. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Mac, for that kind introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. I appreciate the opportunity to be here this afternoon. And let me thank the Lexington Institute for sponsoring this forum. And I'm happy to see so many familiar faces in attendance today. And I'm frequently reminded of the high level of interest that our broad group of stakeholders has in the future of the Postal Service and the mailing and shipping industry. And I take comfort in knowing that we share the goal of strengthening and sustaining a unique American institution. Of course, what that means and how we do it is always up for debate. The Postal Service remains a fundamentally strong organization in terms of our mission and the important role we serve in the American economy and society. The Postal Service is a strategic partner to thousands of companies that use the mail to reach and conduct business with the public. We sustain America's mailing and shipping industry, and we enable America's e-commerce economy. For all those reasons, I continue to be very optimistic about the future of the Postal Service. Yet while I remain an optimist, I'm also realistic. We have to acknowledge that we continue to face systemic financial challenges that must be addressed. Our costs to fulfill our universal service obligation and to fund our mandated benefits programs continue to rise at a faster rate than inflation and outpace our ability to generate revenue in the competitive marketplace necessary to pay for those costs. And legal restraints imposed upon us, which limit our ability to grow revenue, worsen this imbalance. These financial challenges are the reasons why I have continued to stress the three core areas of activity that are necessary to restore the Postal Service to financial stability. First, the Postal Service must continue to pursue opportunities to increase profitable revenue and drive greater efficiency within the constraints of our current legislatively imposed business model. God bless you, Governor Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> You're not being sarcastic. I am not. <laughs> I am not. This is the Vice Chair of the Postal, Postal Board of Governors. <laughs> We continue to focus on core business initiatives to achieve these goals of both growing profitable revenue and cutting costs within our control. Second, the Postal Regulatory Commission must create a pricing system for the Postal Service that provides greater flexibility and better reflects the needs of the organization. And third, legislation is required to make changes to the Postal Service's business model to enable us to grow revenue and to reduce our cost base by addressing some of our mandated expenses that we simply cannot afford. And for the Postal Service to continue to meet our universal service obligation and to serve as the backbone of the nation's delivery infrastructure, Congress will need to make a series of legislative changes that address our structural issues and that will allow us to transform our business model. We will continue to advocate for responsible legislation and regulatory reform. If we can get the reform I've described, I am confident that the Postal Service will remain a bedrock institution that is a fundamental part of the fabric of our great country. However, 
The reality is that while some things will remain the same, some things simply have to change. And as I'm closing out my career, I thought that I would take this opportunity to share with you some of my thoughts, my personal vision for the future of the Postal Service. The core mission of the Postal Service will continue to be one of public service, provided to the people by the government of the United States. We will provide prompt, reliable, and affordable mail and package delivery services to the American people in all communities and all areas. And we will continue to operate in an, an unrivaled physical and digital network in an efficient, business-like manner. We will remain the face of the federal government in every community. And we will enhance our role in this regard by partnering to expand quality access to government services. We will support the mission of the executive branch as appropriate and serve the public interest in a fiscally responsible way. And in that regard, it is important that the Postal Service of the future must be capable of paying all of the bills, covering all of its costs, and funding all of its legal obligations. And in order to do so, the Postal Service should see nothing and compete fully in the package marketplace, both to ensure that all American consumers and businesses are able to participate in the e-commerce economy and to help fund the costs of our universal network. We also need to be brutally honest and to recognize the economic realities of our business. The truth is, while there are certainly tremendous opportunities for expansion and growth in parts of our business, that's what keeps me optimistic and enthusiastic about the future of the Postal Service. It is also beyond reasonable dispute that some aspects of our business are contracting, and we need to adjust. We need to recognize that some aspects of our infrastructure need to be streamlined as mail volume continues to decline while other aspects need to be enhanced and to improve our competitiveness and to enable us to grow profitable revenue. We must continue to operate efficiently by prudently managing our costs and adapting our network to reflect the evolving needs of the American people. And I fully expect that those evolving needs will include an expanded role for the Postal Service in the package business as e-commerce continues to grow. Our future strategies should also include better leveraging our assets to expand our public service mission and to promote the public good. We should expand our mission by strengthening our role as the most frequent touch point between the federal government and the American people. <coughs> by fully leveraging our physical and digital infrastructure, we can become the storefront for government services. As we design the Postal Service of the future, I submit that there are really two key public policy questions that need to be answered. And those questions are, one, what do you want your government postal service to do? And two, how do you pay for it? And ultimately, those questions will need to be answered by the United States Congress. In the interim, we already have a body that is presidentially appointed and Senate confirmed, and that is tasked by law with representing the public interest. And that body is the Board of Governors of the United States Postal Service. If Congress wants to look for guidance and input, as it pursues the difficult task of answering these two key public policy questions, I would suggest that the place to start is with our Board of Governors. In closing, I have said all along that the financial problems of the Postal Service are serious but solvable. We require a commitment and urgency on the part of policymakers and the support of stakeholders to ensure the future of this organization and this industry. 
which matters to the American people and matters to the American economy. And with that, I'll conclude my remarks. Thank you very much for having me.